Hello VC, it's time for another record update and this time I'm concentrating on metal and a uh, little bit that's, uh, well, close to metal and let's start with one of those King's X, uh, Gretchen goes to Nebraska uh, I mean, I heard about this album when it was released uh, but, uh, and I've always meant to get to know this band because I've uh, Many times I've heard very good things about this band, but uh, just never have. Uh, I recently found this for 5 euros, so I decided to finally give this one a chance. And uh, I like this album uh, other than uh, the song Over My Head, which was uh, released as a single. Which is to me it's surprising because it's to me it's uh, the worst song on this album. But other than that, I like this one. But in my opinion, it's not metal. It's uh, closer to something like uh, um, Faith No More. Uh, maybe closer to something like uh, funk metal than um, heavy metal. Okay, let's stay with the CDs for a moment. Thin Lizzy, Bad Reputation. This is the extended version. Uh, of all these the extended versions that I have, uh, this one is the least necessary. This one has a few uh, BBC sessions and one soundtrack, but the uh, none of these versions really add anything to the original studio versions. Other than I think it was the title track from the BBC sessions, which at the end of the song has like an extended soloing going on. But even with that one, they faded out like halfway through, which is a, a sad thing because it sounds really good. But yeah, they fade that one out. Uh, far better is this one, Nightlife Deluxe Edition Double CD. Uh, these uh, BBC sessions, in my opinion, are uh, better versions uh, compared to the Bad Reputation. And also these have uh, demo versions with uh, Gary Moore on them. Uh, Gary Moore was uh, in Thin Lizzy for a moment, they recorded these demos, then he left and uh, later on uh, Brian Robertson and Scott Goham came, became members of Thin Lizzy and they recorded this album. So uh, these uh, bonus tracks are far more uh, interesting than those on Bad Reputation and also, in my opinion, this uh, uh, album Nightlife on this one is a remixed version to the original album version uh, because in my opinion this sounds more uh, raw than the original album version uh, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that the, there's like a synthesizers or something that's been used on the original album has been like mixed down so I'm not saying that this sounds raw uh, but it, it doesn't sound as soft as that on the original uh, album version, so I prefer this one to the original vinyl version. Uh, okay, uh, let's go for vinyl for a moment. Judas Priest, Rockarola, their first album. Uh, I've heard this uh, a long time ago, but I didn't remember what I thought about this. But yeah, a good album. Uh, I would say that even the second album, Sad Wings of Destiny, is uh, already much heavier than this one. This one is uh, definitely more in a, like a hard rock than metal album. But a, a good album nonetheless. I really like this. A good one. But uh, goes to some way so, uh, to show the, how much in a grip of vinyl I am. Because uh, I didn't even realize it until I was home with this one. That I, uh, I wasn't meant to buy this one on vinyl. because. Uh, nearly all of the Judas Priest albums that I have, I have them on CD. So I was meant to buy this one on CD as well, but I, now I bought it on vinyl. So that means that I have to buy uh, Sad Wings of Destiny on vinyl, uh, and that one I do have on CD. Uh, okay, then Headless Cross by Black Sabbath. Uh, very good album, I like this a lot. Uh, but still, I have to say that, in my opinion, of all the Black Sabbath albums that I have, I don't have nearly all of them. Uh, there's plenty of uh, Sabbath albums that I don't have. But of the albums that I have, uh, in my opinion, this is the furthest away from the uh, 
traditional like a trademark Black Sabbath style. But yeah, but still very good album. I like this a lot. And I put also another Sabbath album, Born Again, Deluxe Edition, Double CD. Uh, I know that a lot of Sabbath fans uh, don't like this one, but uh, I like this one. And I bought this one on a double CD for a couple of reasons. First of all, this cost le less than what I would have have to had pay uh, for the vinyl. And uh, I think it was Scott Waters and Trog who said that this uh, this CD sounds better than the album. And also, this uh, bonus tracks includes a live set. And although I like this album itself, uh, I have to say that I actually prefer this uh, live set on a bonus disc here. Um, okay, another double CD, Tokyo Dome in concert Van Halen. Uh, I keep telling myself that uh, I don't like this very much, but I actually have played this several times already, so I must like this more than I'm uh, willing to uh, willing to admit to myself. Uh, one thing I'd like to say, uh, I've always enjoyed going to stadium concerts, and this one here says, recorded June 21st, 2013, in front of 44,000 of our closest friends in Tokyo, Japan. So it's a stadium concert, uh, which I think is always a brilliant achievement, but uh, it pales somewhat when compared to the other Tokyo Dome live recording that I have, Rolling Stones, uh, live at the Tokyo Dome. This one is also recorded one night the, uh, at, at the Tokyo Dome, but this uh, concert was one of the 10 concerts at the Tokyo Dome. So <laughs> uh, being able to uh, play a 10 nights stand at the stadium is uh, quite an achievement, I have to say. And a brilliant live album this one is. Okay, then there's uh, this case is like uh, uh, Out of the Cellar by Rat. It's uh, easy to understand why I didn't buy it during the 80s because I didn't like it back then. Uh, but then there are albums uh, that are more like a, like a, more of a question mark as to why I didn't buy them, like Draw the Line by Aerosmith. It, it's the only 70s album by Aerosmith that I, I've never heard. And I really don't know why I never bought it. I, I just didn't. I mean, I liked pretty much all the 70s Aerosmith albums, so why I didn't buy that, I don't know. But even more baffling is this one. Uh, y and Black Tiger, because I heard this back in the 80s and I like this one. So I, I, really, I really don't know why I didn't buy this back then. Uh, I just didn't. Uh, same goes with the Mean Streak. I also heard that one and I liked it back then. I just didn't buy it, but Mystery Cabot, I think it was like uh, last year. But yeah, really good classic YT Black Tiger. And then um, Riot, Restless Breed, their fourth album. And uh, okay, again, I like this one a lot, but they had, uh, I have the previous two albums to this one. And on this one they have uh, changed their vocalist. So although I do like this, uh, I have to say that I have to get used to the vocalist here. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I like this one. Uh, now I need to buy their first album, Rock City. And I know that the Rock City along with the uh, other first four albums have been uh, reissued and I actually saw that one, Rock City, the last time I was at the record store and I already had it in my hands and I was going to buy it but uh, I decided that I will have to go through the racks first and I found this one, self-titled album by Vandenberg. Uh, I've always known about this band uh, but I've never heard anything from them. Well, with the possible exceptions. Uh, I don't know, I may have heard something from the radio or not. Uh, but uh, yeah, I've never been familiar with this one. Uh, I think I saw Carsten saw, showed this one some time back. And I know the uh, Ingrid, the Dutch woman, showed this on uh, uh, vinyl community pages also. So yeah, uh, this was an interesting find. Uh, 
Uh, one very odd thing is that uh, I've always thought that this would be similar to fast way, even, even though I had never heard this. Uh, I, so I really have no idea why I thought that this would. M maybe this uh, logo has uh, some kind of a, like a distant similarities to Fastway's logo. I don't know, that, that's my best guess <laughs> anyway. Uh, but yeah, this one uh, is pressed on really nice blue marbled vinyl. Really good album, I really enjoyed this one. Uh, again, the vocalist uh, is in the top 10 of my favorite vocalist in heavy metal, but uh, in no way bad, but just not the greatest possible, but yeah. Uh, I actually thought that this was uh, far better than what I expected. So yeah, very, very pleased to have found this one. And then uh, John Jett and the Blackhearts, good music. Uh, during the last couple of years I've listened to John Jett's uh, albums quite a bit, so I've been on a hunt for her albums. And uh, some time ago when I went to record stores, somebody had sold a bunch of her records uh, and I could have bought uh, actually four out of those albums but uh, I had to choose one because of money and this one was the one that I was uh, looking for then and so obviously I took this one. Uh, a good album but um, not as good uh, as my current favorite which is Up Your Alley. So yeah, uh, pleased to get this one uh, but yeah like I said uh, not as good as uh, up your alley. So, yeah, a couple of weeks later, I went back to see if there were other one of those uh, John Jett albums there, and Bad Reputation was still there. Uh, there was at least, uh, when I went, bought the good music, there was, uh, uh, with this one, there were at least uh, I Love Rock and Roll album, uh, Up Your Alley. Um, Glorious results of a uh, misspent youth and notorious. So I could have bought a couple of others, but uh, those were sold. But this one was still there. And uh, yeah, I have this one and uh, I Love Rock and Roll on CD. So uh, I'm not that sad that uh, I Love Rock and Roll wasn't there anymore because, uh, well, I have it on CD and I'm guessing that that will be, well, fairly easy to find. Uh, this is possibly her best album, but uh, at the moment my favorite is Up Your Alley. Um, then, Dystopia by Megadeth. Uh, bought this uh, uh, since uh, I got the recommendation from LJ and actually one of my cousins. Uh, I haven't heard any of their albums after Euthanasia, so I didn't really have a good idea or what you expect. I have heard uh, like one song from uh, at least uh, three previous albums, but that doesn't say so much. But yeah, uh, very good album, very, very good album, uh, very similar to the style of uh, um, something like uh, Euthanasia, for example. Um, one thing that did struck me funny was uh, the intro to the title track. I mean, the intro is very like um, AOR, very poppy intro. Other than that, it's uh, like a really heavy, really heavy album, really good one. Uh, one thing that caught my ear was, I think it was on a song, uh, Fatal Illusion, uh, but not sure if I remember correctly, was that there was a line, whistling past the graveyard, and I immediately caught that one up and said, hey, that's from the Tom Waits song of the same no song. The same name. So yeah, uh, even though it's just three words, uh, I yeah, it immediately caught my ear that the whistling past the graveyard is taken from the Tom Waits song. And then finally, it's fairly Origins Vol. 1. So yeah, uh, what do I think of this? Well, first of all I have to say that I didn't think that this was a very necessary album. Uh, I know all of these uh, original versions very well and the easiest way to say is that uh, the more I like the original versions, 
the less I like them as ASS versions. So the best ones here that I like are the uh, Spanish Castle Magic and Bring It On Home, which are Jimi Hendrix and Led Zeppelin songs. Uh, I'm not r really a big fan of either one of those. So yeah, I like those here the best. Uh, the Kiss, ver Kiss covers, Parasite, Cold Gin, Rock and Roll Hell. Uh, I like the Parasite, I like the best. Uh, Cold Gin is the least necessary. It's closest to the Kiss version, but I understand that now we have those songs with Aces Voice on, on them. But uh, what's the point of Rock and Roll Hell then? I don't know. It, it doesn't match the Kiss version. And then there's uh, this White Room, Street Fighting Man, Fire and Water, Emerald, Till the End of the Day. Uh, they just uh, doesn't match to the original ones. And one thing I've never liked, I'm glad that uh, Lit Up Ford is on that one, so it gives it a bit more edge to it. Um, and one detail that I could mention is the, the sticker here says Freeze, Fire and Ice. Uh, and here it says correctly Fire and Water. So yeah, uh, it, it's, uh, it's okay but not really necessary album. So in that way I have to say that I'm not <laughs> I'm not looking forward to any more uh, volumes for this one. Okay, as you've done it, just leave it, let it go. Okay, uh, that's it for this time. I'm hoping to make another record update very soon, but I have had a lot of problems with my laptop, so uh, remains to be seen whether I'll be even able to upload this episode. Thanks for watching. Bye.